Okay, um, I found one mistake in my previous uh, video and let me correct it first. Now, this Delta QA is not actual work, but this is actual heat. Sorry about this confusion. Okay, so let me move to reversible work. So now, how can we understand reversible work, particularly first in a simple system? As you see in this schematics, the simple system is a system that only includes boundary work. Right? So with that being said, when you think about the reversible work, it still should be the same as the boundary work that we have written in terms of P D V. And if you think about the unit mass, then we can write the equation below, which is, uh, has a unit of kilojoule per kilogram. And now, how can we understand this reversible work? When you try to understand the boundary work at the first time, we basically had made an assumption that the pressure inside the system, actually the system itself, and the pressure outside the system, the difference between them is really, really small. So almost same. That is basic assumption we made to discuss the boundary work. So in terms of quasi-equilibrium process. Now, with that being said, the reversible work can be understood as the work of boundary work basically in the quasi-equilibrium process, meaning that again pressure is of the system is pretty close to the pressure outside. Now we can compare with the reversible work and reversible heat. The reversible heat is basically the heat transfer when we have temperature of the system which is pretty close to or almost the same as the temperature of the outside. So now we can see certain analogy. Then how about the open system? Now in order to understand the open system, let us restrict our discussion to steady flow system. Then the first law of thermodynamics can be written as the first equation as you see here. Now obviously, we I already made dE over dt to be zero because that is a steady state. And let me erase it again. If you wonder more about this, uh, you know, the first law of thermodynamics for an open system, please study lecture note 13. Okay. Now let's start from this equation. So that is the equation we have to use. Then let's divide this whole equation with m dot. So Q dot divided by M dot minus W dot divided by M dot. And now we don't have this M dot here and here. So now Q dot divided by M dot is basically the same as small Q, which is in the unit of kilojoule per kilogram. Same thing, W dot divided by M dot is the work per unit mass in the unit of kilojoule per kilogram. So now we can rewrite the first law of thermodynamics for an open system, as you see in the second line. To make it simple, I mean, look simple, let me define this vi square over two as small ke subscript i. So that is basically the kinetic energy per unit mass. Likewise, we can define the Z, Zi as potential energy I per unit mass. Same way, we can define that as P, uh, sorry, Ke sub E and Gze as Pe sub E. 
then now this equation becomes q minus small w plus let me just try to use minus then we have h e minus h i plus k e e minus k e i plus p e e minus p e i which equals to zero then let me use that as delta h and same way this difference as delta k e and this equation this term as delta p e okay so then this equation becomes q minus w minus now delta h plus delta k e plus delta p e equals to zero or i can rewrite this equation in terms of infinitesimal form as this equation meaning that small q del uh, delta q minus delta w minus dh plus dke plus dpe equals to zero so that is the first law of thermodynamics for an open system when the system is in steady flow for very infinitesimal formulation. Now I'm going to use this equation to express the reverse of work for an open system in steady flow uh, condition. Now let's start with this equation. Okay, so what I did is I only added subscript REV, meaning that there's a reversible heat transfer, and subscript REV which means reversible work in the case obviously that should be reversible work out and this equals to dh plus dke plus dpe now i'm going to use this equation for the um the first law of thermodynamics uh, for, for open system in a steady uh, flow uh, condition to start discussing uh, the reversible process, uh, reversible work. Now, we can write the same equation as this. Here, what I did is I added all EV and here and the work. Okay. Now, Please remember that uh, we are going to derive the expression of delta W R E V. Now, from the previous discussion, we can write delta Q R E V as T D S. And also, at the same time, we know the T D S relation. Okay, uh, we discussed this T D S relation in a previous lecture note. Uh, I believe that is uh, lecture note 16. Then let me write it down again. So TDS can be written as minus uh, TH minus VDP. Now I'm going to combine them together. So what you see is DH minus VDP minus delta W R E V equals to dh plus dke plus dpe now as you see we have common term in both sides which is dh then let me rewrite that equation again so minus vdp minus delta w r e v equals to dke plus d e now delta w r e v is minus v d p minus d k e minus d p e therefore we can write 
the reversible work WREV per unit mass. Okay, let me write it down the unit. So in the case that is kilojoule per kilogram. And this WREV can be written as minus integration small VDP minus delta KE minus delta PE. Now remember that on default in the sign, this WREV is basically work reversible out, okay? which means the work done by the system that is reversible. Okay. Now, if you want to uh, express the work done to the system, we can write it as WREV in equals to positive integration from 1 to 2 VDP plus delta KE plus delta PE. Okay. Many times, we don't worry about change of kinetic energy and change of the potential energy. So if they are negligible, then we can simply write the reversible work out as this equation. So we can apply this equation for example for turbine to calculate the maximum amount of work that can be done by the turbine in a reversible process. Okay. If we consider the compressor The reversible work in, again, can be written as from 1 to 2 VDP. Okay. This is the minimum work that the compressor needs. Okay. So that is equation that we can write out. Then what if your working fluid is incompressible like water? So in the case, the incompressible fluid should have constant specific volume. So the integration of small VDP can be written as small V times P2 minus P1. Now, your reversible work for incompressible fluid can be written as minus V P2 minus P1 minus kinetic energy minus potential energy. Okay. Again, many times we don't worry much about this kinetic energy and potential energy. So the reversible work for incompressible fluid can be written as this simple equation. We are going to use this equation for a pump later because pump has a working fluid, which is usually water, which is incompressible fluid. And please remember, we are going to use this equation later when you talk about the steam power plant. And another case that we have to think about is that what if we have no work? So there is no kind of working component inside, and your working fluid is still incompressible, which means that your D WREV is zero, and also still your const, uh, specific volume is constant, then from the equation on the top, as you see here, now WREV becomes zero, or we can write your first law of thermodynamics equation as this equation. If we try to write out uh, Ke in terms of V over uh, V square over 2 and Pe as G times your height, then your final conclus uh, conclusion equation can be written as this equation. 
I'm not sure if you are familiar with this equation, but actually this equation is called as Bernoulli's equation that you learned in, I believe, in general physics, or you are going to learn this equation in more detail in fluid mechanics. And this Bernoulli's equation is a really uh, famous and important equation that describes a fluid flow in a reversible process. In that case, the reversible process can be interpreted as the no friction because you know there is a reversible so there should be no friction and now your fluid is incompressible fluid we are not going to use this equation that much but you know i i, I really want to emphasize that this equation can be derived from the first law of thermodynamics uh, which actually describes this energy of the incompressible fluid inside the duct or inside uh, you know uh, the, any kind of process